Okay, this is it. Last, last take, last take. This is it. Am I recording? I am. Lyndon LeBayan. Here we go. Hi guys, my name is Lyndon. I'm a software developer and a hobby wedding filmmaker. I use the GH6 as my primary camera for my entire 2022 wedding season, and I have some thoughts. I uh, figured I'd make this video before the official S5 II and S5 IIx details got announced. Just for some context, I was a GH5 shooter. I didn't feel like I needed an upgrade away from Micro Four Thirds or like the Lumix ecosystem, and I needed more cameras for coverage. So instead of opting to buy multiple GH5s, I, as a hobbyist, I, I didn't feel right buying multiple cameras of the same model. So I ended up getting the G9 after the version two update came out and I ended up picking an S5 to supplement those and I replaced the G9 with the GH6 and that's where we're at right now. I have to agree with everything my favorite gear reviewers on YouTube have said. Uh, Gerald Undone, Potato Jet, CVP, Pro AV TV, Cine D, Everybody's right. The two big weaknesses of Micro Four Thirds and maybe Lumix as a whole, you could say, are still the low light performance and the autofocus. That hasn't changed with the GH6 and who knows, with the S5 too, we, we have no clue if that's gonna be changing. We'll talk about that when that comes out, but if the GH6 is the best Micro Four Thirds video centric camera that Panasonic can put out, then I have no problem with Micro Four Thirds being truly dead. The truth is, I actually like using the lenses. Uh, speed boosting the 18 to 35, speed boosting the 50 to 100, using the 12 to 35 and the 35 to 100, even the 10 to 25 F1.7. I love using the Micro Four Thirds system, even with its limitations. Okay, let's talk about low light performance. I would say it's it's not great, but it's totally usable, especially with especially with lights during receptions. ISOs up to 6400 using the 1835 or even the 10 to 25 F17. I think is I think it's just fine. Turn off dynamic range boost and I have really nothing to complain about. Really my only problem with low light scenarios is when it's low light plus mixed light. You know what I mean? When multiple sources, different color balancing, that's my weakness and no, you know, no full frame camera is going to going to save me there. In terms of Autofocus, yes, atrocious, I get it. And it it probably won't get better until they completely switch up the system. I did end up using uh, continuous autofocus a couple times, I regret it. It it doesn't look good, it's passable, but it, it doesn't look great. You have, to, you have to just manual focus if you're gonna stick with the GH or the Micro Four Thirds systems from Lumix. That's just a reality. That said, those are really the only cons, minus the price. Okay, so I guess that's the third con. The third con is, the cost. You can't ignore the fact that the FX30 and the R7 launched this year at $2,023.99 Canadian respectively. Oh yeah, the FX30 came out at $2,399 and the R7 came out at $2,199 I think on sale for $19.99 and the GH6 launched at $2,699 I believe. That's a lot of money and that's a hard sell especially for people who only need one camera or, or noobs like myself just getting into the game right now. It's almost impossible to sell a YouTuber on a camera with trash autofocus, which the GH6 obviously has trash autofocus. And I know that's gonna piss off a lot of Micro Four Thirds users because man, I'm, I'm one of you, I get it. You know, it's not, it's not a big deal to be able to just use manual focus. At least I feel like it's not, but what if, what if that's, you know, what if that's because I, I'm, I've been using a GH5? What if that's because I've been using the Lumix for so long? Okay, th those are all the those are all the cons, and that's how I feel about them, and that's just life as a Lumix shooter. But there's a lot to like about the GH6. I already mentioned the price points about the R7 and the FX30. Uh, the truth is, the R7 is not a video focused camera. Yes, it does 10-bit video, 10-bit uh, video 4K, and I'm sure it looks great. You can produce nice images with it. You're not going to get all the video tools that you get with the GH6 or with it, like, a, like another real cinema camera with it. So maybe that's not a direct competition. For YouTubers, I can see why you would put the GH6 in the R7, kind of like, you know, you'd look at it and be like, well, the R7 is better because it has better autofocus, but I would never pick up an R7 personally. But the FX30 might be a different story. My problem with it is that it's touted as a cinema camera. Same with the FX3. But other than Cine EI, which, I would argue isn't even a real cinema feature because you're just, you know, locking the base ISO 
to the record file and then you're looking at a different ISO on your monitor. Anyways, how does a cinema camera not have shutter angle, not have histogram, not have false color? I don't get it. You know, the GH6 with atrocious autofocus, how does this non-cinema camera have DCI 4K, 120, 60, 24, shutter angle, histogram, and thanks to Caleb Pike, we have V-Log false color. How? And I know those aren't big selling features anymore. Autofocus in YouTube land seems to trump all of those. So it's a hard sell. I don't know how you sell the GH6 at 2300 when something like the FX3 or the R7 with remarkable autofocus can produce still great images exists. And I guess that's my problem. All in all, overall experience with the GH6, fantastic, especially with the lenses that I like to use. If I couldn't speed boost, you know, if speed boosting wasn't a thing with the 18 35, I might feel a little different. If the 10 25 didn't exist, I might feel a little different. The IBIS without question is best in the game. I almost never gimbal now. I don't really like rigging out uh, the GH6 just because I'm not a top handle fan. I, I do like to, I do like to handhold, especially when they're man manually focusing. I'm mainly only gimbling during the uh, ceremony when I got to walk back with the bride and groom, you know, after they kiss and you walk down the aisle. That's pretty much it now. And other standout features I didn't think I'd care about, but I really do, is the uh, S1H style tilt screen. I know the A7R5 has an even better articulating multi whatever screen, which is fantastic. Uh, I do sometimes hook up a monitor. I use 2000 plus nit monitors sometimes with this thing, um, shooting outdoors to be able to manually focus. It definitely helps when the sun's like beating down on you. The fact that this screen can turn and not hit any of your cables ever is freaking awesome. Uh, the fact that if I'm just shooting handheld without a monitor, I can just use this guy and just shoot head on and I'm, I'm in line with the uh, barrel of the lens. Another feature I didn't think I'd care about is this lock feature. Clicking this lock on and off uh, essentially can lock down features that you don't want to touch accidentally. Popular features to have uh, enabled with the lock is record, ISO and shutter angle. Again, because I'm using shutter angle, I got it locked at 180. Okay, I think that wraps up the video. I, I didn't plan this out. I didn't even write notes down. So I don't know what this is gonna look like in the edit. I hope this is, how long was this? This was 20 minutes. So all in all, I would say my experience with the GH6 has been positive, but that's also because I already love the GH5 and this is just a slightly better version of the GH5. Resolutions are great. I don't use ProRes. I don't record to SSD. I got one terabyte uh, CF Express Type B cards for it, so I don't I don't care about SSD recording. I pretty much stick to DCI 4K, 120 and 60, 24. It's just all around a great camera that I will never recommend to any of my friends because cameras like the S5, the R7, and the FX30 exist, at least for the $2,000 range price point. You know, this video wasn't really helpful, I know. Hopefully it was at least a fun listen. Damn, S5 announcement coming up. We'll have another video for that. Uh, phase Detect Autofocus probably coming but I also hope that doesn't push the price up over $3,000 Canadian. But that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay, bye guys, bye. We're just gonna fade out. We're just gonna fade the video out right here. Shutter angle. Why don't all cameras have shutter angle? You know, these cinema cameras, why don't they have, why don't they have shutter angle?